ask some questions. Did you know that in the scriptures God even said that he waited to be inquired of? He was looking for people that would inquire and ask questions. Don't feel that you're going to, you know, bend God, put him out, be a pain in the neck, as I use all these American expressions, forgive me, that, that it's going to be a problem if you ask God some questions. He's waiting for you to ask questions so he can teach you, because if you ask the question, then you're going to better learn the answer. When you try to pound information in somebody's head who isn't interested, doesn't have a question, it's very hard for them to learn and retain anything. But if you approach God not only looking for his beauty, but with your questions, then when you get the answers, they stick a lot better. They apply a lot better. So here are these five things, these five words I want to impress upon your mind, all being under the sign of one thing. Ask. Ask. And we would find that word used in the Amplified. The Amplified Version, ladies, quickly it says, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, inquire for, and insistently require, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the day of my life, to behold and gaze upon the beauty, the sweet attractiveness, and the delightful loveliness of the Lord, and to meditate, consider, and inquire in his temple. So basically five things. you got to ask. He said, you have not because you haven't asked. Isn't that what it says in James? Then seek. That ask and desire is all in the same bag. <laughs> ask, desire. Seek. Dwell. Then dwell. Don't be in and out the windows as the little song, you know. In and out the doors. In and out the windows. No. Get in there and, and get, get founded. Get situated as permanent in the Lord. And then to behold the sweet attractiveness, the delightful loveliness of the Lord, and inquire so that you can learn, ask your questions of the Lord. She said in the Song of Solomon, ladies, if you remember in the Amplified Version, that this to her was a delight and he was so precious. In the Living Bible, it says, none can rival him. In Song of Solomon 5, verse 15, she says, none can rival him. He is so altogether lovely, there is none that can compare, in other words, with the Lord. You know, I love my husband. I love my beautiful daughter. I love my grandchild and my son-in-law. I love the beautiful home. My husband has worked very hard and sacrificed greatly that we might have for many, many years now. And uh, uh, there's many things that I love and appreciate, but to top them all, None of those things can compare with the beautiful Lord Jesus. Because that is eternal. These other things may be more temporal in experience and relationship. But the Lord offers to us that which is forever and ever and ever. And someone that would give their life on a cross for me, I have to stand up and say, I salute I acknowledge what an awesome thing he has done to pay the price for my salvation, for my eternal life, to spare me from a pit of destruction. I offer you today this same wonderful Savior, if you're listening and you don't know our Lord. It's so simple. He said, I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man will just enter in, you can go in and out and find green pasture. He is knocking at your heart's door today. If you're my listener and you don't know our Lord, he's wanting you to open up your heart's door and let him come in so he can sup or dine with you and commune with you and you too can get acquainted. And you're going to find, just like the bride in the Song of Solomon, that he's all together lovely. That no human being was ever capable to express satisfactorily what he truly was like. Only the half, if even that, could ever be told. She says, oh, he's a delight and he's precious. None can rival him. No, none can rival him. At the conclusion of uh, Song of Solomon 5, verse 16, part B, in the King James, she says, this is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters 
of Jerusalem. You see, they had asked her the question. In other words, how can we help you find him if we don't know what he's like? Describe him for us, in essence, is what they were asking. And so they said, what is he? And she says, my beloved is. And she begins to list all these features, how beautiful and lovely they are that we've covered in these 12 parts, such as today. And she says, at the conclusion... The sum total of all this, the sum total of all this quality, this is what is my beloved. This is what I'm in love with. This is what means so much to my life more than anything else. And do you know the command of the Lord is this? Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. God is a jealous God, the scripture says. And he doesn't want anything else to compete for his place in your life. He wants to be number one. You must give him priority. To really get the most out of your walk with God, you must put him at the top of your list. She said, this is my beloved. This is what my heart is enraptured with in a sense. And then she says, this is my friend. She wasn't ashamed. She didn't hum and haw and make excuses for this one. She was seeking to know better and asking for help to find him when his presence had been withdrawn temporarily. No, the more she talked about him, the more her heart beat, the louder, I'm sure, pounding with passion to find and embrace him to her heart again. And she uses this expression, not only that he was a beloved to her, but he was her friend. I love the promise of God, ladies. I'm sure you've heard it many times in Proverbs 18, verse 24. Well, we won't turn there, but you know what it says. It says that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I have a brother that to me is very precious, very dear to my heart. But the scripture says we will have a friend in the Lord and he will stick to us closer than even a brother could ever stick. You need someone like that. I need someone like that. Do you remember when Abraham had a walk with God, the kind of walk that was so close and so precious that he was privileged to be called the friend of God? What a magnificent title to be crowned with that you could be called the friend of God. Abraham was the friend of God. You see the bride in the Song of Solomon, she's saying, this is not only my beloved, he's my friend. And like it said in the scripture that I quoted to you in Proverbs, a friend that sticks closer even than a brother ever could, because sometimes brothers do fail. They're not perfect, they're human. I think of how in John 15, we won't turn there, but when the Lord was speaking and teaching that he was a vine, we would be the branches and we were to bear fruit. And he begins to tell them that he wanted them to abide and really dwell in the vine, to really stick there and abide there. And if they, they would dwell there or abide there, the word is used, that then they could bear much fruit, fruit from the rootstock of him, the vine. It would be fruit from really the, the essence of his loins, This fruit would come forth and how he would deal with us in a way so that we could bear more and more fruit. But his concern was that the fruit would remain, not fall off of the tree before it was mature, but that this would be fruit that would abide and remain and last. And in telling the the, uh, disciples about that in John 15, he said, I'm not going to call you servants anymore. I'm going to call you my friends. Because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But you see, he was schooling them about what he was doing as he instructed them. And so he said, I'm not going to call you servants anymore. I'm going to call you my friends. How wonderful to be able to say, the Lord Jesus Christ is not only the beloved of my heart, but indeed he is my friend. And a friend that sticks closer than a brother when nobody else wants to stand beside me with what I'm facing. He is that friend that sticketh close. I want to emphasize the word is that she used. I-S. He is. This is a verb. 
In your English grammar, this is a verb, is, which means present tense, not he once was my friend, he once was my beloved, or he someday will be my friend, someday he will be my beloved. She says no. She says, he is, that means present it right now, real in her life, he was her beloved, he was her friend in the present tense. That's what she's referring to. You see here, all this that we've covered and more that I didn't have time to cover is her testimony in this passage that we use as our backdrop of Song of Solomon 5, verse 9 through 16. This is her testimony to her community. It's her assessment of her experience in her walk with her beloved. I asked you today, what is your testimony? If someone should ask you, as the neighborhood ladies, the daughters of Jerusalem, asked the woman in the Song of Solomon, well, what is your beloved like so we can find him with you? And she tells them, well, if someone should ask you the question, what is the Lord like to you? What would your testimony be? How would you assess your relationship with him? How would you describe the experience that you have had with him? Your testimony be begins to be a way for them a sense of identification so that they can put their finger on it in a sense and say, oh, that must be who he, she is talking about. If they asked you, would you say, oh, he's a stranger? Oh, he's just a historical figure. No, oh, he's a good man, or he was a teacher, or he's a prophet, or he's my savior. Some would say, he's my Lord. Some would say, he's my friend. Some could say, he's my beloved. And some would say, he's my bridegroom to come. All the above. You know, Jesus asked the question in Matthew 16, verse 13. He said, who do men say that I am? I ask you today, who do you say? that he is. Can you say that he's these lovely things, the beautiful bridegroom? I hope that you can. If not, press on in and begin to know him through the word, through seeking his face, and through fellowship with the saints. Well, this is the conclusion of this particular series. May the Lord make it a blessing to your life. Amen. Let flowers bloom, O oh Lord, where tears have fallen. Let our hearts as your earth and footstool you. Reason righteousness, the Lord's own plenty, so that Program copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs $34, DVDs $44, at $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brook song album. Audio cassettes $10 each. CDs $14 each, at $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts, call toll free 1 866 777 4748 or call 1-619-445-0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-4539 or 1-619-401-9389.